so much. Uh, thanks, Paul. Uh, thanks to all of you for coming out. I see a number of students uh, and other faces I recognize here today. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Penn Physical Plant for reminding us that continued resource extraction leads to both carbon and noise pollution. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I would note that this is actually my third Climate Week at Penn, even though I've only been here for a year. Um, I interviewed here at Penn during Climate Week. And it was the passion among the students, uh, the staff, the administration, and the faculty that really convinced me that Penn was the right place for me to be. Uh, as I joke, um, all I had to do was take my Penn State business card and cross off the state, and I was all ready to go. Um, so let me talk about uh, our fragile moment. Uh, thanks to this past summer, we now know what dangerous climate change looks like. Uh, it looks like the Hawaiian paradise of Maui set ablaze in a deadly inferno born of extreme drought. It looks like the orange tinge of our home city of Philadelphia shrouded in choking Canadian wildfire smoke. Or the faces of grief-stricken families in nearby Bucks County who lost loved ones in an epic flash flood. And the scalded feet of toddlers in Phoenix who made the mistake of walking out onto toaster oven hot pavement. Dangerous climate change is here but it's up to us as to how bad it will get. In my new book, Our Fragile Moment, due out next week, a blatant plug, um, I explain what we can learn from, uh, about the climate crisis from Earth's longer term climate history. Paleoclimate data, for example, show that we may well have just experienced the warmest days of the warmest month in at least 100,000 years. And in a matter of decades, if we continue to dump carbon pollution into the atmosphere, we will exceed levels of warmth not seen in millions of years. This is an unprecedented experiment that we're performing on the only planet that we know that can support us and other living things. A window of opportunity still remains for averting a catastrophic 1.5 degrees C, three degrees Fahrenheit warming of the planet, where we'll see far worse impacts than we're already seeing. But that window is closing and we're not yet making enough progress. I think we all know that. We must not yield to despair. And this is a theme that we heard uh, earlier as well. The antidote to doom is doing. We should be inspired by youth climate activists who won a landmark court case in Montana this summer establishing that the state had violated their right to a clean and healthful environment. It's a major precedent-setting uh, precedent victory, but we cannot leave climate action to the youth. Those of us in a position to vote and influence policy today must do all we can while there's still time to preserve our fragile moment. Thank you.